Hello, hello, hello. Is there anybody in there? Hey everybody. Today we're going to talk about the Berlin Wall and the symbolism that it has on the Cold War. Um, before we get started, let's discuss a few forms of government that existed during the Cold War, kind of before the Cold War, and at the end of World War II. There was three types of government that existed. One was the communist government, second was the democratic government, which is us Americans, and third was the fascist government, and the fascist government was the Nazis. Um, pretty much, they believed in... Mm, Everybody could have their own business and their own jobs, but they kind of had to um, all contribute to the government. So everybody had to work for the government. If Even if you had your own company, it's like, mm, it had to better be for the government. And then the communists is the Soviet Union, and the communists are kind of more of a potluck dinner. Like, everybody can bring their own dish to the dinner. But there's always that person that will eat a little bit more than everybody else. So, in theory, technically, the idea of a communist government is kind of cool until um, everybody in the class, they all seem normal. There's no upper class, middle class, and lower class. Everybody is even. Mm, but, you know, somebody's always going to dip their hand in a little bit more and take a little bit more out of the pot because they all get greedy, you know, those politicians. First, we want to mention Joseph Stalin. He is the leader of the Soviet Union. You know, he calls himself the premier and everything. He's kind of pompous in that aspect. We want to talk about our American leaders and FDR, Franklin D. Roosevelt. And after that, did you know, by the way, cool idea, um, he actually served for four terms. After that, Truman came in, he took AFK. So those are the big leaders of our Cold War government during the 60 years that it went on. I mean, it's like insane. But we are definitely going to cover the Berlin Wall, which was probably more like 30 years between 1948-ish and 1960s, kind of the big when they went in and everything. So um, after these messages, I get back to you. So I want to talk about how why the wall was put up. Basically, Stalin, the head of the Soviet Union, he kind of got these things called freedom cooties, and he kind of was like all weird, and he didn't want anybody from Germany on our side, which is the one of the two zones, which is the non-communist zone and the communist zone. There's the two zones. We were on the one zone, and he kind of started taking over the countries like Poland and Hungary and everything to kind of create a buffer zone. And that's what we realized because he didn't want the freedom idea getting over to his people. So I kind of call those the freedom cooties. Um, he went and decided to put up a blockade in Berlin without us knowing about it. So we went in and we're driving along and we're like, hmm, we gotta take all our goods to our side of Berlin and we're driving along and all of a sudden we get to the checkpoint and he's like, stop. Well, his people, obviously. So they told us to stop and we could not bring our coal, our water, our food into Berlin all of a sudden. So that raised a red flag. So we, time went on, things kind of happened in other parts of the country. And so we got sick of not being able to supply Germany, our part of Berlin, that we were taking care of. They were little kids, and we couldn't get over them and help them, so we started flying stuff them because we couldn't take it by land, so we took it by air. And it's so amazing because in one year period of time, we actually took 2.3 million tons of food, supply, coals, it was the craziest thing. Actually, candy, they dropped Hershey Kisses from the air. 
And make a little Hershey kiss. Anyways, um, to get back to the subject that the, of the Cold War, I just wanted to kind of talk about why the wall went up, and that was why. Stalin kind of had the freedom goodies, so he wanted to put a blockade. Once he put the blockade, we kept flying over goods, and then he noticed that that wasn't going to stop us, so he put up a wall so his people weren't defecting, because they were thinking, mm, communism's kind of a bummer. So people were defecting all the time, and so we put up a wall, and, and it was 12 feet high, but they had like people guarding it with guns, and about 200 people died trying to cross it, but thousands got across, so it was kind of cool. Um, but in 1963, JFK actually visited it, and after this, I will show you a short clip of a famous speech that JFK presented at the wall in 1960. Freedom has many difficulties, and democracy is not perfect. But we have never had to put a wall up to keep our people in, to prevent them from leaving us. All, all free men, wherever they may live, are citizens of Berlin. And therefore, as a free man, I take pride in the word, Ich bin ein Violiner. Great. I hope you enjoyed that video of JFK visiting the Berlin Wall in 1963. Just to sum everything up, I really want to just say that the Berlin Wall is a great symbol for the Cold War because it just demonstrates the division between communism and democracy and the U.S. and the Soviet Union and our ideas and beliefs and our government, everything, that they divided Berlin right down the middle and people wanted to get to the other side because they believed too. And Basically, we had a Western society belief of freedom, of government, and democracy, and the differences of government, power, ideas, really are displayed well in this Berlin Wall analogy. So, um, thank you guys. Have a good day.